Welcome back. I'm Sleepless Running, and today we're going to be doing yet another Battletech Tier Maker list. Today's list is going to be the 20 SLDF mechs from Technical Readout 2750 and Technical Readout 3050U. Because 2750 was, is from 1989. It was published a very long time ago. Several editions of, went through on them. And they finally reappeared, or they did, and they finally reappeared again in 3050U in the back of the book in the Star League section. Some of the designs may be different, so I'm going to be using both of my books as I'm going through them today. And we're going to just, once again, create a tier list. I've made my five unique tiers, like I always make new tiers every time I'm doing all these lists. It's just kind of fun. Today's tiers are Kerensky's Choice. Because as we all know, Kerensky fled from the Star League with a whole bunch of people, creating the clans and the Pentagon worlds. So, Kerensky's Choice, the best of the mechs. Then we have Probably Taken. These are mechs that were probably taken in the Exodus. Worth consideration. Mechs that were worth considering being taken on the Exodus. Not worth consideration. I think that's pretty much the self-explanatory. Not worth considering taking on the Exodus. And then Probably Abandoned. These are the ones that were probably most definitely left behind. I'm honestly not sure we're going to have any in this category. I think, if I remember right, a lot of the designs in 2750 are, are generally ones I like. Remember, this is all an opinion piece, and these are my opinions. And now, what I just said right there could be completely wrong. I may end up hating a mech going through these again, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Some of them look, they look really stupid or really ugly, but I'm not going to hold that against the mechs. I'm going to go to their stats, their battlefield roles, that kind of thing. And of course, my gut reaction to them. So maybe a little bit biased by looks. We'll, we'll, try, to, we'll try to avoid it. I'm talking about you, Sentinel, and you, Wyvern. Okay, let's start with our first mech. The MCY-99 Mercury. I'm looking at both books right here. And to me, it looks like both of them are the same. I don't see any differences or deviations between the two technical readouts. Except for, oddly enough, in the 3050U book, it doesn't have mask listed under weapons and ammo, where it does in the 2750 book. It does say mask over where it's talking about uh, the maximum speed, and it also shows the mask on the movement profile, so it's, it's there. It's just interesting that it's not in the same place between these two books. Interestingly enough, the armor value is different. It must have been the way the old math was done, because in the older book I've got 54 points, and in the newer book I've got 53 points. Still, it's a 20-ton mech, so you're not going to be expecting a lot of armor on this thing. It does have ferro fibers, which is why we have that weird number. So, good for that. It's got a great set of weapons. Medium, medium, small, small. Eight points of heat. Good, good weaponry for a light mech that moves 8, 12, 16. It's got okay armor. I mean, looking at the values, it's pretty much... Lee. It could be higher, but not a lot higher. So, it's pretty close. to. It's pretty close. In general, I like it. Is it the best of the mechs? No, but it's probably taken, and it's a solid little mech. Like, it's never going to run out of heat. I mean, it's got 8 points of weapons and 10, 10 heat sinks, so you can run and fire everything all the time. Interestingly enough, with only 20 mechs in the book, we're going to have two 20-tonners right here. So the, the Mercury was 20 tons, and the T-H-E-N Thorn is also only 20 tons. I don't, I don't like this one quite as much. It's going to be definitely probably in the worth consideration category. It's got an LRM-5 with two medium lasers, which isn't bad. It's got really, it's got, I think, maximum armor for its weight class, which, again, is very interesting. I'm looking at the books. This is actually really kind of a cool experiment to do. Because in the 1989 book, the Thorn has 72 points of armor. And in the more recent 3050U book, it only has 69 points of armor. So my guess is if I look at the numbers... Oh yeah, right here, I'm looking at the sing, because they both have 4.5 tons of armor, and every value is max on here. It is maximum armor on this mech. So what might have happened is, the 4.5 might take you to max and have some extra points of armor that you can't equip. And so, the one just says, it has 72 points of armor, even though the mech can't have 72. And the other one's showing 69, because that's the maximum armor you can actually carry at the 4.5 tons of armor. It's a 6.9 mech, which puts it in the same category as a Stinger and a Wasp for 20 tons, but it definitely out-armors both of them. It has two medium lasers, which in honest truth means it's already better than the Stinger and the Wasp in like direct fire weaponry in most cases. And then it has an LRM-5 with case. So, yeah. It's 
better than Stingers and Wasps. It, it's not a bad mech at 20 tons. It doesn't look great. It doesn't look terrible. It's just kind of an eh design for image-wise. But I'm going to put it in the worth considering. for it Because for a 20-tonner, it seems just a skosh over average, but not a lot more than a skosh over average. Big benefit of it, it does have Indo-Steel, which gives it that one extra ton over Stingers and Wasps. One extra ton. Next up, we have the MON66 Mongoose. Indo-Steel on both on this mech. And again, I have definitely got to look at this because it has ferrofibrous, but once again, they, they must have done the math differently back in 1989 because the 1989 book says 90 points of armor and the 3050U for much more recent modern book says 89 points of armor. I think this is really kind of interesting to look at these side by side. I hadn't done this before. It's an A12 mech. It's pretty good. Ferrofibrous, Indo steel, so good on those two things for advanced technology. Three medium lasers, a small laser, and a beagle active probe. Which means it does generate 10 points of heat on the offense when it fires everything. And if it runs, it's going to go up two points of heat. But that's just easy to turn off the laser the next turn and be cool. It's actually, it's actually a really solid little 25 ton mech. I, I can't see anything wrong with this design. It actually looks pretty good. It's got good speed, good weapons. It doesn't jump, which could be a small liability, but so far, none of these Star League mechs have jumped. The first three do not jump, and they're all lights. But at the same time, I really kind of like it. Three mediums, primary weapons. It's got good speed, good armor. Yeah, this is definitely a probably taken mech. Here we have a significant difference in the two books, which is very, very interesting. So in the old 2750 book, we have the HER-1S Hermes, and in the 3050U, I have the HER-3S Hermes. Now, earlier in the, AT, in the 3050U book, it mentions that any designs that are changed are essentially showing that the, that the original design is no longer functional in the inner sphere at the time of the book. So that means the HER-1S is a lost design, probably. The HER-1S has got 90 points of armor. The HER-3S has 44 points of armor. That is light. That is very light on a 30-ton mech. That is that is like really scary light. The the 3S has mask. The 1S does not have mask. The 3S has a big active probe, making it a great scout because it better be a scout at that that at a 914 parentheses 18 for speed and no armor. I mean, I consider 44 points to be pretty close to no armor. So this thing is a very light scout. With two medium lasers, it's not going to overheat, but if something strikes it, a single medium laser touching this thing is a scary weapon against it. The HER-1S has got 90 points of armor and lacks the mask, but still moves 914, so it's pretty fast. Oddly enough, it doesn't have the scout equipment. It doesn't have big active probes. It doesn't have mask. In their place, it has a flamer, and flamers are anti-infantry weapons at best. If you're playing with the proper rules where they do both heat and damage, at least it's acceptable because spending three points of heat to do two points of damage at out the three hexes is pretty lousy in general for a ton. But the ability to do things like setting terrain on fire can be useful. And killing infantry can be useful also. So give or take how you view that, view the flamer. I think it's a okay weapon at, at in general. The thing about the this Hermes is it's more of a combat Hermes. It's not a scout Hermes, which puts it in a completely different area to look at. I'm going to put the Hermes in the worth consideration category because I think for this list, I'm going to consider the 2751 to be more of the mech I'm looking at. And I think that's worth considering. I think the 3S is probably maybe also worth considering, but it's really only a scout. It's very limited in its roles. It can't stand up and fight at all. Not with 44 points of armor. Next up, the HSR 200D Hussar. Remember how I was complaining about 44 points of armor being low on the Hermes? I mean, like that was just like a minute ago. Oh, this mech mounts 27 or 26 points of armor. Again, hooray for these books not agreeing on armor values. This thing's armor is so low that a single LRM-5 rack that rolls average on the missile on the missile cluster chart is a threat that can likely critical this thing. That's that's scary. That is scary light armor. It's a 914 with no scout equipment and an ER large laser. Yeah, it's a long range sniper that better never be in the open and better never be not moving. I'm not a fan of this mech. I mean, I can see its potential use in the battlefield, but in general, this is 
such a fragile glass cannon that an accidental anything anything getting a lucky roll on it has a potential of just knocking this thing out of the battlefield in one hit. I mean, and that's pretty scary. If you get in range, if a PPC locks onto this thing and hits it, it's gonna lose a limb. It, a PPC will take off any limb on this thing. It'll even rip out a torso, except for the center torso. It, it'll take off a right or left torso. So if this thing gets an unlucky shot by a PPC, you can just consider it out of the battlefield. Out of the battle. It's done. So, I honestly probably should put this thing in the probably abandoned category, but I'm going to put it in the not worth considerate, consideration because it is got a very niche role as a long-range harasser mech. Hussar, harasser, I don't mean anything about it. But, you know, it's it's just so a, any lucky strike and this thing's out of the battle. So it's just too much of a glass cannon, in my opinion, to be anything higher than not worth considering. And now we come to what might be one of the ugliest mechs ever drawn ever i don't hold against the artist i'm guessing that maybe this is the design they were told to do but i mean the original artwork it's hard to tell where the legs are coming from and i have tended to call this thing a testicle on legs it just looks terrible it's 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 dopey the stn 3l sentinel it's got high speed for a 40 ton mech it's got it moves at 69 so it's kind of high speed it's the first mech I think I've seen in the book that has the same armor value between the 2750 and the 3050U. It has 88 points of armor, which is less than some of the other mechs you're looking at that were lighter in weight. So it's lightly armored also. And it mounts three weapons. It mounts an Ultra AC-5, a medium to long range weapon that is at least better than a C-5. Then it mounts an SRM-2 Streak, which is a questionable pairing to the Ultra, and then even more so, it carries a small laser. The weapons on this thing do not, in general, turn out very good either. I mean, it's fast-ish, but and it's not going to have a heating issue because it's got 10 singles and none of those weapons are going to overheat it, but its weapon loadout is very ammo-dependent and very scattered shot on the ranges, so it really can't actually help in any one bracket. I'm not a big fan of AC-5s in general, but at least Ultras are slightly better, maybe? The SRM-2 Streak is just a, not a weapon I'm a very big fan of. I'd rather take an SRM-4 and drop the small laser, or something, or drop the SRM-2 Streak to an SRM-2 and take a medium laser. At least then you're putting two weapons in the same bracket. I'm, I'm not a big fan of its com combination of weapons at all. I'm really torn on this one. I'm not a fan of this mech at all. Until I get some later area variants that actually don't turn out 100% terrible and at least the one in the catalyst kickstarter looks a lot better too i mean this mech has had one of the ugliest models for all time also so poor maligned little sentinel and i feel like you probably were abandoned you're just such a scattershot mech that's not really good at any one thing and pretty bad at about everything speaking of ugly mechs how about the wve 5n wyvern it's a 45-ton mech that only moves 4-6-4. Four, four. This is, I think, the first jumping mech I've seen in this book so far. In either of these books. It has Indo-Steel, which is good. And its weapons loadout is honestly not terrible. It's just... I don't know, maybe because it looks just like a human with, like, mech lines all over it? It just looks kind of creepy. I, I, like, really kind of, like, creepy. Like, bad 1970s sci-fi creepy. Its real lack is the fact that it only has 12 single heat sinks. It has got 152 points of armor, which makes it the most armored mech we've seen in this thing. And that's nearly double the Sentinel, and it weighs only 5 tons more. So, it also moves a lot slower. It has an LRM-10, a large laser, two small lasers, and SRM-6. So, as long as you're smart with your weaponry, you can probably manage your heat okay. Although, the large laser, you're going to be wanting to use at all brackets, and that is the majority of your heat you're building up. Which is where the real problem lies in. This thing, if this thing had 10 doubles, it'd be fantastic, actually. A pretty good all-around solid mech that could be constantly firing us weapons and hit, keeping the enemy on the uh, on on the back foot. But with only the single heat sinks, it's lacking something. It's also got a mathematical error in the book. It shows the internal structures being 2.25 tons. This is from back when they actually did the fractional weight for that kind of stuff. The modern book has it as 2.5 tons. I think I'm going to put this mech in the worth considering category, despite the fact that it's creepy 1980s. 1970s, 1980s sci-fi robot man look. It's just kind of creepy. 
which is really interesting because now we're going to come to the CRB27 Crab, which is like one of the best mechs in the book as far as I'm concerned. Movement at 5'8", has ferrofibrous armor, it doesn't have Indosteel, it doesn't have an XL engine. So far no mech has an XL engine in this book. It's got 161 points of armor, making it now the new highest armored mech in the book. And it weighs 5 tons over the Wyvern. Mounts two large lasers, a medium and a small laser. Sadly, it only has 16 single heat sinks. Again, that's just kind of a thing that's going on. But it's a it's a it's a fantastic mech for it. It's a 5.8 speed. It's got good armor. It's got good weapons. You can fire one large, one medium, small, and run around all day doing just fine. You can fire two larges a couple times before cooling off. It's a really solid mech in general. I, I can't see anything wrong with the crab because it's an all energy loadout. It's good solid armor. For a 50 tonner, it's a really good mech, and I think that Kerensky would definitely choose it. Here we come to another deviation between the two books. In the 2750 book, I've got the KTO-19 Kentaro. In the 3050 book, I've got the KTO-20 Kentaro. They have the same armor value, the same speed profile, the same endosteel, or the same no, la no endosteel, but the same sort of ferrofibrous armor. The biggest difference is the KTO-19 mounts a NARC missile beacon in place of the large laser on the 20. So the older version mounts a NARC missile beacon, which is honestly pretty good considering it has two SRM-6 racks, an LRM-5 rack, and two medium laser. The NARC missile beacon can really be used to get those missiles in there a lot better. I'm not saying the large laser is in any way bad at all on the mech, except for I'm seeing the other difference right now looking at them. The KTO-20 has 10 doubles. The KTO-19 10 singles. The 19 overheats like a monster. It's very hot running. The 20, even with the large laser on there, or the, the is going to be much more heat efficient. Because you can fire all of your all of your close range weaponry and not be have a problem. You can fire your two long and medium range weapons and not have a problem. You can mix and match around there like you can even have the large laser in on the close range ones and then cool off a little bit the next turn. Far more versatile with that double heat sinks. The 19 really does lack on that. It looks like the KTO-20 came out when Comstar started supplying the Draconis Combined military service with the Kentaro mech. They stripped out the NARC missile beacon and put a large laser in its place and somehow upgraded to double heat sinks. I'm going to evaluate this on the KTO-19's performance, which is the heat inefficient one. And I'm still going to put it in the worth considering category because overall the mech is a very solid 5.8, 55 ton combat machine. It honestly goes toe to toe with Wolverines and Griffins and Shadowhawks and probably in a lot of cases comes out on top. So I'm going to value this on the 19 and I'm going to say it's worth consideration. It's not very pretty but I like it anyway. Next up, the CHP 1N Champion. This is one of the weirder looking mechs because it looks like it wanted to be an airplane or... A forklift, I'm not sure which one. Maybe both, it's an airplane forklift. Anyways, it has less armor than the Kentaro, it moves the same speed, and it has an interesting selection of weapons. An LB-10X, first one we see in the book, which is not bad in any way, shape, or form. An SRM-6 with Artemis IV, that's pretty good actually. And two medium lasers and two small lasers. The big advantage is, every one of its weapons are in the torso. So the arms are like these little wingy things on the side, that are this just there to eat damage. Which is just fine. There are armor chunks on the side, which is actually pretty good. What this thing is once again lacking is heat capability. It's only got 10 singles. Yeah, LBXs don't generate a ton of heat. It can it can heat up a little bit, then cool off some. Heat up a little bit, and cool off some. It's not terrible. Its its biggest lack is the fact that it even with ferrofibrous armor, it doesn't have enough protection. It could have used Indo Steel to go along with that, and it probably could have fit that in, and it would have been a much better mech because with three more tons of armor. Well, it would have been maxed armor, probably, which would have made it a very survivable mech. It's not bad. I think it's probably taken, even though it's silly looking. The LNC-2501 Lancelot. I think this is our first XL engine in the book. So, it's a 6.9 60-tonner, very fast, with all energy loadout. PPC, two large lasers, and a medium laser. And 13 double heat sinks. It doesn't have endosteel. And it doesn't have ferrofibrous, and its armor is only 152 points. And 152 points is pretty much what you see like every 3025 era Wolverine, Shadowhawk, and Griffin equipped with. So it has the armor of a 55 tonner, but it's faster than a 55 tonner. It's 6'9. 
It's speedy. It's got solid weapons. It can. It's it's a good mech. I mean, it's almost heat efficient. If it dropped out that medium laser, and had one more double heat sink, you could fire both the largest, the PPC, and run all day without a problem of heat. As it is, he's just got a smidgen of a heat issue, and you go, and you can handle that pretty easily by turning off one of the weapons, and it's going to cool down real fast. So I think this is probably going to fall in the Kerensky's choice, which puts my Kerensky choice mix right now as having a very heavy theme, all energy all the time. Interesting. The two books have a different order on the next two mechs. The 3050 book actually has them in proper alphabetical order. For some unknown reason, though, the 3025, or the 2750 book has them in not alphabetical order, which is actually how I have them on here. I have the Exterminator first before the Bombardier. So let's talk about the Exterminator. The EXT-40 Exterminator. This is our second mech with an XL engine, and it's mounting a 390 XL. This thing's a 6'9 on a 65 tonner. It also jumps six. It mounts 10 double heat sinks. It has 168 points of armor. So not bad on the armor. It could be higher, but it's not bad. It has four medium lasers, a small laser, an AMS, and an LRM-10 system. It's a pretty solid mech. It can fire all day long and keep its heat down. It can shoot the mediums and jump just fine. The AMS is going to protect it a little bit against missiles. It's only got 12 ammo worth of AMS, which is pretty good. But yeah, I mean... Other than the XL engine making this thing a fragile side torso mech, it's a really good mech in general. It's a close range brawler with a little bit of long range support. And it is mentioned as being one of those mechs that's supposed to have, you know, had a null signature device in the fluffy text. Then there's also the interesting editor's note, which is kind of bizarre, from the 2750 book that says, In spite of extensive abilities, or perhaps because of them, the Exterminator did not survive the first Succession War. Very successor state armies began to train specialized mech lances purely to seek out and destroy exterminators. Then, the 3050 books got the really fun little tidbit. Until the Com Guards revealed itself in the 3030s, no exterminators were known to have survived the First Succession War. So in other words, some did survive, they just weren't known by the houses. Which makes a lot of sense, you know. It's a cool mech to keep around. It's, an, it's, got, a, it's got a really good looking model. And it's got a new Catalyst Games ones coming out, but also a also really good-looking model. I've always liked this mech. And I am going to rate this as a Kerensky's choice, because it, it's just a really good mech. It's fragile with the XL engine, but, you know, it's got the right weaponry, the white right heat sinks, good maneuverability, and solid enough armor that I think it deserves it that, that place. I like it. I've also always liked the way it looks. Now let's talk about the BMB-12D Bombardier. Our third mech with an XL engine. So apparently once we get about 60 tons or higher, we're going to have XL engines. Which is fine. It's a 5.8, which is a bit odd to me because this mech doesn't need speed. Its primary role is a long-range support mech like the Archer. It has two LRM-20 racks with way too little ammo. It only has 12 points of ammo, so six launches per rack. Then it has an SRM-4 and a ton of SRM-4 ammo and an AMS system. I don't mind the AMS on there at all. That's kind of good. But in some ways, this thing needed to find some way of getting more ammo for those LRM-20s. Another ton would have given it three more shots per launcher, which had been really good. And that's kind of what it really needed, in my opinion, to be truly a Krinsky's choice. As it is, with the 10 doubles, it can fire those LRM-20s all day and never not a problem. It's got 200 points of armor, making it the most heavily armored mech we've seen so far, which means it's going to be a good survivability. It's just that lack of ammo that really holds it back. And if you're willing to just take six turns of shooting, it's not a bad mech. But after those six turns, you're going to be closing in to fire an SRM-4 and punch things. Which I guess in that case, the 5.8 is actually pretty useful to have, because you have to get up in people's faces. But if it had a slower engine, or if it had ferrofibrous or endosteel, or one other additional upgrade technology, this thing would have enough ammo to not have to really engage in battle. Close range. Until, of course, it needed to because someone else approached it without being destroyed. As a long-range support mech, it could have used more ammo. So I think I'm going to put this thing in the worth... Uh, probably taken. It's probably good enough. It just... That ammo lack is really... Makes me want to put it down to worth consideration. But I'm going to be a nice guy right now and put it one level higher. Because I think, other than that, other than the lack of ammo, it's a good mech. The GLT 3N Guillotine. No XL engine, but it has endosteel, which is good. This is a 464 70-ton mech. 192 points of armor, which means it's a half ton armor lower than the Bombardier, which is acceptable. Mounts a large laser, four medium lasers, and an SRM-6. 
And then the weird thing. 25 single heat sinks. It's a lot of heat sinks. It's a lot of heat sinks. It can't jump and fire everything, but oh no. So even though those are single heat sinks, the only issue this mech has is that it doesn't have maximum armor. I mean, other than that, maneuverable enough for a 70 tonner. Good weaponry. It's a good darn mech. And it looks pretty cool, too. I've always liked the guillotine's design. So, this is going to go into the Kerensky's Choice. I've got another two mechs that are out of order in the 2750 book that are not in alphabetical order. That's very weird. We should be talking about the Black Knight next, but instead we're going to be talking about the Flashman. Light bulb. We're back to an XL engine. A 375 XL, meaning this thing's a 75 tonner, moving at 5'8". That's a good clip. 15 double heat sinks. Oh, sorry. This is the Alpha LS 8K Flashman. Forgot to say that. Three large lasers, five medium lasers, one going in the rear, ugh, an AMS system, and then a flamer. Okay? Aside from the flamer and the rear-mounted medium laser, there is honestly nothing on this mech I don't like, other than the fact that it's a light bulb. It is very hot running. I mean, very hot running. But it's okay. It's got 216 points of armor, making it the highest armored mech we've seen so far. But it's, again... More or less all energy, just just that AMS that's not energy. And wow, is it a mech. Fire all three large lasers, and you're not going to overheat any. You can even throw in like a medium laser, and you're fine. Two medium lasers, and you go up by movement heat. Oh no. You get into point blank range, and you fire those four mediums, and you toss in like two more larges, and you can run, and you're still doing fine on heat. I mean, that's how good this mech is. This mech is more or less firing almost all of its weapons all the time. Just have to lay off a few of them here and there, depending on what your one is. You longer range, you're using the largest, closer range, you're using the mediums. Ignore that flamer. Ignore the flamer. Unless you go up against infantry, or you need a lot of woods on fire, don't bother with it. It's just there to eat up a ton in the head. Uh, and that, this mech is truly fantastic, and I'm so glad it got a re-sculpt in the new Catalyst Kickstarter. It's gorgeous in that thing. So much better than a light bulb on legs. Sorry, Gru. I just don't like light bulbs on legs. Still... This is a Kerensky's choice. What I'm being, what I'm finding very interesting in some of those tier lists is this is a top-heavy tier list, which implies to me the 2750 designs were definitely designed with a different mentality behind them as being more efficient designs, probably because they're supposed to represent the Star League, a more advanced organization. The BL6 KNT Black Knight. Oh, this is a good. This is a. Oh, it's on my. This like I love this model for this mech. I've always loved the Black Knight model. And we have another very similar theme. This one doesn't have the XL engine. It only moves 4, 6, weighs 75 tons. 208 points of armor, so like half a ton below the Flashman. Oh no. Issue, 20 singles. Flashman had 15 doubles, making it really top-notch. Black Knight has 20 singles. Which is a lot more of an issue when you mount a PPC, two large lasers, four medium lasers, a small laser, and a big galactic probe. The big galactic probe is a nice little addition so that it can, you know, help sense things around it. But it really needed the double heat sinks. The double heat sinks would have been the icing on the cake for this mech to make it a lot more versatile. As it is, it suffers from that. It, it really can't fire even all of its long-range weapons without going up by a significant amount of heat. We're looking at 26, 28 heat if you run. That's 8 points over on the, on the long-range weapons. And that means you're immediately looking at penalties. And that's not very good. That really really means that I think the Black Knight's highest category can go into is probably taken because it's good, but it's lacking that little extra something to make it fantastic. And it's lacking is double heat sinks. Seriously, Star League Defense Forces, doubles on this thing, and you'd have had a mech that would have been frightening on the battlefield. THG-11E, thug. 4-6, Indo steel, 248 points of armor. It's also got good speed. The weirdest thing about it is its choice of weapons. Two PPCs, two SRM6 racks, two tons of ammo, and two case systems. It doesn't get anywhere near those 36 points of heat, which is fine, but odd choices in my opinion for that many heat sinks and with that weapon loadout. I'm not saying it's bad at all. That thug is actually a really good mech. It's like the bigger, more heavily armored Warhammer, which is pretty nice. It's just lacking some of these secondary weapons the Warhammers tend to have with the mediums and the smalls. Which it could have fit in if it didn't have 36 heat sinks. But then it might have overheated. So, you know, we're looking in that area. But I think this thing is a pretty solid design all around. 
I can't object to anything on it. So I'm going to put this sucker in the Krinsky's Choice. CRK 5003-1 Crockett. This is a very interesting mech. Because if we flip back in the 3050 book earlier, we can find the CRK 5003-2 Katana, which is a much worse mech. The Katana to the Crockett is an amazing... The Star League uh, forces selling the stuff to the DCMS pulled a con job on the DCMS with the, two, with the, with the Dash 2. The Dash 1 is a 353 85-tonner with 15 double heat sinks, 264 points of armor, making it very durable. Double ER large lasers, double SRM6s, double smalls, and an LB10. The Katana loses the ER larges, which I don't have an objection to. Other weaponry is exactly the same. But, because of the difference, one significant difference, the Katana has 20 singles. The Crockett has 15 doubles. The Crockett dissipates 30 points of heat, the katana dissipates 20, but the biggest difference is the armor difference. 264 to 200. That's the con job. They made a mech that has 64 points less armor. That is crazy. That's four tons of armor lost. That's just crazy. The katana, or the crocket, the dash one, also mounts one extra ton of LBX ammo, which might be excessive. That thing has 30 shells of LBX, and you're never going to fight that long. So honestly, you could have dropped that out for like another heat sink even, and it would have been even better. Because two tons of ammo is plenty fine. One solid, one cluster shell, go to town. You're good. But the con job pulled over on the DCMS with the katana is just hilarious. It is such a lesser mech compared to the crocket. The crocket is actually pretty darn good. No actual engine. Yeah, this thing is definitely Kerensky's choice. It's a good, good mech. Now we come to the HGN 732 Highlander, possibly my favorite mech in the book. And why is that? Gauss rifle. Yeah. This 90 ton monster mounts a Gauss rifle, an LRM 20, an SRM 6, two medium lasers, moves at 353, has 278 points of armor, and is just devastating on the battlefield. It doesn't heat up too much because it's got a Gauss rifle, so that generates one point of heat for its big cannon. Again, interestingly enough, I'm looking at my books, and I noticed that the, the 2750 book listed as 278 points of armor. The, 37, the 3050 book listed as 277 points of armor. Additionally, it must have been off somewhere else, because the one in the 3050 book has two tons of ammo for the Gauss rifle, which is what it should have, but only one ton of the 2750. So I'm not sure what went weird where. Or maybe they just forgot to record one. Who knows? Sometimes weird things like that happen. Anyways, the Highlander is an amazing mech. It always will be an amazing mech. And it will always be a Kerensky's Choice mech. Like I said, this is really heavy load. This is really heavily top loaded. A lot of these designs are really good designs. And I really enjoy them. And we come to our final mech. The truly terrifying KGC 000 King Crab. And the 001 King Crab. So there is going to be a difference here between these two mechs. Oh, geez, I see why, too. Okay. The 000 King Crab from the 2750 book mounts two AC-20s with only five shots apiece, lacking ammo. Rough. It mounts an, a large laser and an LRM-15. 287 points of armor. 350 with ferrofibrous. Its biggest downside is seriously that lack of ammo for the AC-20s. Put this sucker in a city, put this sucker in a place where the enemy can't get away from it, and it can actually get into point-blank range on those AC-20s, and you're going to shred mechs. That's pretty darn good. The crazy thing is, the 001 is an insanely good mech. I mean, insanely good. The 001 mounts double Gauss rifles with 16 shots apiece. It also has a large pulse laser to match the LRM-15, and then it mounts two streak SRM-2s as extra insult. The 001 does have one big downside over the triple zero. It has an XL engine. But that XL engine brings long-range devastation with it. The 001 also mounts two less heat sinks. The triple zero mounts 15 singles. The 001 mounts 13 singles. That actually means the triple zero has probably got a bigger heat issue because those AC-20s do generate a significant amount of heat. Um, so that, that's just not great for it. But that does mean you're firing... 
either your long range weapons of the LR15 and the large laser, or you're firing your AC20s. On or off, pick them. But the other one can fire the Gausses, the LRM15, and the large pulse laser pretty much consistently. The large pulse definitely doesn't have the reach to get out there and say hello like the Gauss and the LRM15s do, but if it's in range, you might as well fire it. The triple zero one is a much better mech than the triple zero, but for the choice of this list, I'm going to use the triple zero as my mech I'm going to put in there. And that lack of ammo and that heat issue for this thing really does kind of pull it down. And I want to rake this thing high. I love the king crap because the variants get crazy stupid like the double zero one. But the basic triple zero, I think, is probably... <sighs> it's probably taken. I almost put it in with worth consideration, but that double AC-20 is so scary. And it can get it to, and it can get to the battlefield because it has 287 points of armor. So it can get up there and it will survive long enough to bring those into play. So... Provided nothing goes wrong and doesn't get an ammo explosion or something like that, it can get those AC-20s into the battlefield at some point in time. And when it does, something's going to regret it a lot. So, it's going to be probably taken. It's If it had double heat sinks and dropped out five of those for extra ammo and like a little bit more armor, oh, this thing would be a glorious mech. A truly amazingly glorious mech. As it is, it's really good. And we've come to the end of the 2750-3050 upgrade SLDF mech tier list. We are very top-heavy today. I didn't have a lot of bad to say about almost any of these mechs. Just a few little niggling issues here and there. Which, I, again, I think really points to a completely different design philosophy behind these mechs than behind the mechs in the 3025 book. Which is really kind of interesting. And if you go back and you look at the technical readouts when they came out, the 3050 technical readout, the one that introduces the clans to the Battletech universe back in the day, came out, I do believe, in 1991. So it was right on the heels of this one. This is kind of like the... The precursor, letting people see the stuff before the clans came in and sucker punched everyone. So, it was a, it's a, I'm so glad I have my old 1989 Technical Readout 2750. It's such a nice book to have. It's just so classic. But I'm also glad they did update it in the 3050 book to give us a few new variants and to kind of update the fiction and the lore to show where the universe was. Because the 3050 used Technical Readout section is written from someone writing in 3071. So it's kind of like a, this like nice little historical like you know look back on it, which is really kind of a pretty cool thing, and worth it for the fiction. That's a nice list. That's a list that I think is very heavy, very top heavy. But again, those are good mechs in general. I mean, those are good mechs in general overall. I like them a lot, and I am very happy that we're getting a bunch of these with the new kick with the Kickstarter, which should be shipping very soon because I personally got my email asking for my address confirmation. So I hope if you're on the Kickstarter, you've gotten yours as well. With that, remember, as per all, as every single YouTuber always says, please like and subscribe. And this is Leap of Sermon saying sayonara, and we'll catch you next time.